Hey, this is Alex in the Cool Worlds Lab in the Department of Astronomy here at Columbia University. We've been thrilled at the response that we've gotten from our paper that came out last week called A Cloaking Device for Transiting Planets. Our work was featured on Space.com, Popular Science, Scientific American, CNN, NBC News, the BBC, to name just a few. Uh, and we've been so excited to see readers around the world engaging with these big questions of whether we ought to try to make contact with other civilizations, whether, by contrast, we should hide ourselves from other civilizations, or whether other civilizations out there might be artificially modifying their transit signal right now. Some readers of the various articles and viewers of our last video had some questions about our work, and so we thought we would address those questions in this video. Clams Bodine writes, Okay, a planetary cloak is a nice idea. I just don't understand why we would bother. Much of the media coverage surrounding our paper has focused on this idea that you could build a cloaking device for the Earth. Now, as science fiction geeks, I think we share this enthusiasm for futuristic ideas like building a cloaking device for the Earth. But as scientists, I think it's safe to say that we share the skepticism that some have voiced about the necessity of building a cloaking device for the Earth, at least right now. Our paper was chiefly concerned with this question of whether other civilizations out there might be modifying their transit signal for the purpose of broadcasting or cloaking their presence. So, the question arises, why would another civilization want to cloak their presence? One intriguing possibility is what's known as the zoo hypothesis. This idea postulates that the reason we haven't been able to make contact with other civilizations is because they are actually avoiding making contact with us during our technological infancy. In this scenario, the extraterrestrials simply don't want to have any influence in our development. If that's the case, if they are intentionally avoiding us uh, because of the technological feasibility of building a cloaking device, like the one that we describe in our paper, we argue that other civilizations could be doing this to the Earth right now. ICSLLC says, if the hostile aliens are a thousand light years away, don't you think it would have been a good idea to do this 1,000 years ago? So that's an excellent point. If another civilization is 1,000 light years away from us, it will take the light from our laser array that we described 1,000 years uh, to reach that other planet. We are not actually advocating the construction of a cloaking device for the Earth right now. Though, if we wanted to broadcast ourselves to other civilizations, then we could build a device like the one that we've imagined and do so at moderate cost. Even so, we are primarily interested in the question of whether other civilizations might have built a device like the one that we described. And once again, there are any number of reasons why another extraterrestrial civilization might want to cloak themselves from us. If this other civilization that we're imagining is situated a thousand light years away, they very well may have anticipated the development of our technology and could have started broadcasting quite a long time ago, uh, and therefore we would see their signal today. Gozer writes, LOL. Okay, good idea, but assuming the aliens have a simple technology like ours. Uh, many readers and viewers of our last video were concerned that the cloaking device that we uh, talk about in the paper would not be able to fool uh, extraterrestrial technology far in advance of our own. But in fact, a cloaking device consisting of lasers at many different wavelengths would do a very good job of fooling instruments like our own or instruments in our near future. Uh, of course, there are concerns about polarization and coherence based on the laser light, uh, but we believe those are issues that certainly could be uh, solved by engineers here on the Earth if we wanted to build a device like once again, we argue that this is something that other civilizations could be doing right now. We simply ran the numbers, and we have good reason to suspect that any uh, extraterrestrial civilization, especially if they are, have technology far in advance of our own, would be able uh, to overcome these relatively minor engineering challenges. But in fact, the chromatic cloak that we discuss in the paper, a cloaking device that has uh, many lasers spaced at different wavelengths would, in fact, be able to fool uh, a transit telescope with technology far in advance of our own. The biocloak option, which is once again this idea that you can cloak biological signatures in the atmosphere, this would also work with a transiting telescope uh, with technology far in advance of our own. 
Once again, we would stress that we simply ran the numbers and uh, we argue that other civilizations out there could be doing this to us right now. Unfortunately, this also means that more advanced uh, telescopes that we might build could still be fooled uh, by an extraterrestrial cloaking device. Patricia Arce writes, We're already doomed to be discovered if we haven't been found out yet. We've been sending greeting messages with samples of our history and culture, and there are all sorts of satellites we've put into orbit. It's true. We have been leaking radio signals into space for the last several decades, and though those radio signals would be very, very weak after they've traveled across many light years, it's still conceivable that those radio signals could be detected. Even so, these radio signals would not be detected by an instrument like a telescope, a transiting telescope like Kepler, for instance. Those are totally different uh, signals. We do not handle the case of how to get around that issue. We are primarily concerned with this question of masking uh, transit signals. Our work is just one piece of the puzzle. Moving on, Mike of Orion says, Hi Alex, all that is fine, but if you're talking about a highly advanced alien race, they'll figure out pretty quickly that we're here based on uh, the uh, gravitational tug that the Earth exerts on our sun. Planetary transit method it has been a spectacularly successful technique for finding planets around other stars, and it stands to reason that other civilizations would have independently developed this technique as part of their planet hunting arsenal. One other successful method is called the radial velocity method. Using this technique, you are able to observe the gravitational pull that a planet exerts on its star. As the planet goes around the star, the star pulls on the planet, and the planet also pulls on the star. And so while we are not able to directly observe the planet in these cases, we can observe the gravitational effect that the planet has on the star. Our paper does not present a method for disguising a radial velocity signature. However, the biocloak option does produce self-consistent observations. Once again, the biocloak works by masking certain chemical signatures in the atmosphere of the planet. So you can make it look like there's a planet there, but by masking these chemical signatures, you can make it look like life never arose on that planet. Or you can even make it look like there's no atmosphere uh, whatsoever. So if another observer were able to see a radial velocity measurement, and they also see the transit, and it just looks like nobody's home, then this is a totally self-consistent observation. Of course, there are other ways to find planets, including direct imaging of the planetary system. You just take a photograph of that system, and you have to block out the starlight, and then the planets appear in your image. We have not presented a way to disguise these signals, but maybe somebody out there watching today could come up with a way to do it. Thank you so much for watching. It has been so exciting for us to watch people around the world engaging with our work and thinking about these big questions of whether we should broadcast ourselves, whether by contrast we should hide ourselves, and crucially, whether other civilizations out there might be broadcasting or cloaking themselves to us right now. If they are, just maybe. It's already in the data, and we could go looking for these signals. So thank you for everyone who has commented. I hope we've been able to answer some of your questions. And as always, if you like what you see, please check out our other videos and subscribe below, and we'll see you around the galaxy.